insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 104. The baby, the beard, and the boot. I'm your host, <laughs> Joseph Whalen. My ambitious and liberated co-host, Michelle Whalen. Okay. So why are you ambitious today? I don't know. Why? Because you, you gave me show notes on Monday. Oh. <laughs> and why are you liberated today? Because I am two weeks and a day from my second COVID shot. So you so. are Fully vaccinated. I am fully and vaccinated, ready to hug those that are two weeks out from their second. That are all approved for hugging. Right, right. I am right. I am hug approved now. So Absolutely. And we have our first family get family together. Get together with other similarly uh vaccinated, vaccinated family, family members, members this weekend. Yeah. We're we're all kind of like teary eyed excited because we haven't seen each other since last March, since yeah. before everything started. So human, human contact again. What yeah. a novel idea. Whew. Besides like you know, seeing Us. people yeah. right. Or like going to the grocery store and like Avoiding people. <laughs> Dodging people. Yeah. You're not six feet away. Like playing <laughs> Frogger in the aisles of the grocery store. Yeah, so store. this will be nice to actually be able to be in, in close contact. So, yeah. so yeah. Sunday Sunday's the day. Yeah. Saturday, too, because we're playing D&D with Sam on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So that'll be nice. Right. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about entertainment news and in our Disney detective We'll take a look at both a real-life Disney villain, complete with handcuffs and a catchphrase, <laughs> and a real-life Disney hero. Then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, Gina Carano has a new Star Wars-type show in the works. And the beard is back. <laughs> Ewan McGregor prepares to start filming the new Obi-Wan series, and he's growing in the beard. Mm -hmm. And for our entertainment news, the right stuff got the wrong news. And we can expect a completely different season three for one of our favorite shows. Mm -hmm. And then we'll obviously finish up with our insightful picks of the week. Ready to get into it? Sure. All right. Go for Disney Detective. So this story had popped up. There have been a lot of different news sources talking about it. So I figured, you know, we might as well talk about it, too. So it seems a Walt Disney World guest was arrested and charged with trespassing after refusing to get his temperature screened, according to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. While he was handcuffed, the Louisiana tourist tried to convince law enforcement, law enforcement officers that he had paid too much to be arrested. I paid $15,000. You can't trespass me for paying $15,000. That, that was his, his catchphrase. Um, the, uh, the guest, Kelly Sims, who was staying at Disney's Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa, said in a video seen by the Tampa Bay Times, the troublesome guest also claimed to be a stockholder while pleading with sheriffs. Uh, the Baton Rouge uh, resident was apprehended by sheriffs and Disney staff after skipping a mandatory temperature check outside the Boathouse restaurant at Disney Springs. Temperature screenings and mask wearing are required for all guests and employees at Walt Disney World. Um, still, Sills, uh, initially refusing a temperature check upon being handcuffed and escorted out of the park, asked to go ahead with COVID-19 protocol. And um, he's like, well, will you take my temperature before you kick me out? And <laughs> the deputy said, yeah, they'll do that in jail, sir. 
Um, you know, the deputy then told Sills that he was now on, you know, that he was on private property and now he was trespassing. And of course, he, you know, kept going on and on about paying $15,000 and then going on about, do you know how much stock I own in Disney? Well, he obviously eventually cooperated with law enforcement. Um, he has pled not guilty to a misdemeanor of trespassing. Um, and obviously, you know, he isn't the first person to complain about this. Um, you know, many cast members have, you know, told various, you know, experiences of harassment from guests, um, you know, trying to, you know, get them to adhere to the, the protocols that are in place. Um, you know, so of course this isn't the first, but it's kind of, you know, a funny one because he kept, you know, going on and on about, you know, spending $15,000 on his vacation and getting. So how obtrusive is a temperature check? I, I, I don't get it. Yeah. Like, like I, I don't get it either. I mean, I would think a bag check would be more obtrusive than a right. temperature check. And the thing is, you know, most people, you know, are like, all right, do it on my forehead. Or there are people now, you know, there have been a bunch of different reports out there saying, you know, too many times, you know, with it on your head or something. So now they're saying to just do, you know, for like young children or, you know, if you're worried about it, to, to do it on your wrist. Your wrist is just as... What would you be worried? Well, like, what's... It's a whole... You Google it, yeah. It literally just reads a laser off of I your know. head. I know. People are like, oh, lasers. Oh, and, my yeah. God. Do the, are these the people that wear the tinfoil hats, too? <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah. Disney employees with freaking laser beams. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's, it's just... Really? And the thing is, I'm sure you got your temperature checked multiple times. So I'm a Disney stockholder. Who, first of all, who pays $15,000 to go to Disney? That's that's the number one thing there. Well, maybe he was there for like two weeks. Mm, maybe. But okay. So, so all right, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. So I paid $15,000 mm -hmm. and I'm a stockholder. Mm -hmm. So that means that I'm immune to COVID, right? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, wh wh what's the logic behind that? I, I don't that? know. I don't know. And and the thing is, Disney has n has made it obvious about their rules and regulations mm -hmm. that you yeah. need to follow if you want to come here. These are our rules and our regulations. You know, we they just released that how they were kind of um um not laxing um they're they're relaxing them they're the relaxing mask. right so some of the you, masks if you're stationary and you're taking a picture outdoors you can temporarily take your right, mask right you off can take your mask off for for the, for the picture so okay you know but that's it but you know if you're eating you know that they, they had basically said if you were at a restaurant and not eating you still you needed to wear it the only time you could take it off is when you know you're you're actually putting food into your mouth right. So they, they've they put all these rules out there, you know, so if you want to go there, you have to abide by and their you know rules. What? That's whether, just the way Whether it is. people like it or not, Disney's private property. Absolutely. It is not a public park. Mm -mm. It's not subsidized by the government. And they, they can, can make whatever yeah, rules they want they, for being on their property absolutely. and using their facilities. Absolutely. And they can refuse you if... You know, you don't want to well, adhere like, to Well, and that's like I'm it. waiting. We had a story last week about uh, the governor of Florida right. basically outlawing the requirement for for uh, vaccination passports, which right. don't exist yet. Right. I'm waiting for that fight to start. Mm -hmm. When Disney's going to require you to have a passport to come in when they finally form it and the people that are going to fight that. The governor, it's, governor has no authority to do that. Right. You can't tell a private company, right. you know, not to allow that. Right. If it's a public park. Right. Yes. That's where you have mandate over, you know. Right. And if you're getting government subsidies. Right. The government can withhold the subsidies if you're not mm -hmm. going to abide by their, their terms. Right. But even, you know, there are certain states that have already lifted the, the mandatory masks, but yet chain stores you know, that operate are still requiring it. And it's no, and that's, it's no different than no shoot, no shoes, no service absolutely, policies. Absolutely. Absolutely. No mask, no no uh vaccine passport, no service. It's that simple. No haunted mansion for you. No haunted mansion for you. 
that's why fortunately I got my, that, that's why i got my shot so i can go on my right that, that right because you don't want to be one of the 99 <laughs> I don't want to. exactly that was a good one so that was our disney villain yeah. tell us about our disney hero so this was a story that you actually found um so it seems that a uh, New Mexico teen became a bona fide Disney hero while on her vacation when she rescued a drowning toddler. Uh, Cadence uh, Hensley, who's 13, was spending her spring break visiting Walt Disney World with her family. During a pool day at the hotel, she noticed a small unconscious body in the deep end of the water. She said, I was scared and nervous and afraid, but my instincts kicked in. I just saw her kind of floating. She wasn't technically on the bottom when I was there. The victim was actually a three-year-old um, named Haven Williams, who was also spending a vacation with her parents down in Florida. Her mother, Ashley, stepped away from the pool for a moment. She said, I just remember seeing another woman running across and yelling, uh, into the bar area for someone to call 911 because a baby had drowned. And she said, I didn't even think that it was my baby. Um, Hensley helped have helped get Haven out of the pool as her lips were turning purple. Um, the mother, uh, Ashley had said she recognized that it was her own daughter based on the, the child swimsuit. Uh, a cast member at, uh, she's actually, um, an employee at children's hospital in Missouri and she recalled the terrifying feeling of losing um, her child. Um, a heroic bystander helped Hensley um, perform CPR until Haven could be transported to the hospital. Though things were touch and go, Haven is now expected to make a full recovery. Um, they, uh, Ashley had said even the doctors were saying that whoever got her out of the water did it at a perfect time because she could have been... Under, if she had been underwater a little longer, it would have been a much different outcome. Um, Hensley has um, remained modest about her incredible actions. She said, I knew it was the right thing to do to help somebody out. Uh, she even plans on getting her CPR certification in light of the situation. And since the near drowning incident, Haven has stayed in touch with her rescuer. They have sent each other uh, little notes and uh, Hensley has actually sent her a little friendship bracelet for her birthday. Uh, her mother had said the fact that they can still celebrate a birthday. Um, I'm sorry. It was, it was uh, the, the teen's father had said the fact that they can still celebrate a birthday this week, celebrate Easter and all other holidays and see them grow up and maybe even have lifelong friends from New Mexico to their state. Um, Little Haven is very lucky to have walked away from relatively unharmed. Yeah, that's a that's a great feel good story. And it touched me because I thought, you know, our daughter's 14. Mm -hmm. She's been in that situation where she's been one of the only people in the pool mm -hmm. at the time, you know. Right. When we're down there. Right. And, you know, what would she have done in that situation? Right. Yeah. How would she have reacted? Yeah. Uh, you figure this is a, you know, it's a, not only is it a life saving event, it's a life changing event. Oh, absolutely. You know, this can really dictate the direction that one goes with their life mm -hmm. from here. Yeah. And obviously, you know, since she's taking up CPR, it's, it's already had an influence on her. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think that was a great story. And I think, uh, it's good to see real heroes out there like that. Absolutely. So that was all we had for our Disney detective. We'll mm -hmm. be right back with our tales from the edge of the galaxy. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Go 
for Disney uh, Tales <laughs> from the other side of the room with the galaxy. Tales from the other side of the room. <laughs> oh boy. So poor Gina. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously there's there's always some news going on about uh Gina Carano. Um, so obviously, you know, she lost her acting gig on Disney's Mandalorian, the Star Wars spin-off series, um, after controversial tweets that went out. Um, and it seems that, you know, the firing by Disney resulted in her losing out on a lot of different royalty potentials. Uh, there was a lucrative Funko Pop deal, it seems, that was in the works. Uh, there were action figures um, of her character. Uh, also, she was uh, on a recent appearance of Running Wild with Bear Grylls. Um, that was going to be part of the Disney owned National Geographic channel. And that actually got shelved. So they already filmed it. Um, and then according to We Got This Covered, who quotes, Di uh, Hollywood insider Daniel, uh, Rickman, uh, Carano's firing cost even more opportunities than had been initially reported. So the outlet had claimed that her character was being set up to obviously appear in the Star Wars show Rangers, um, of the New Republic. And they also claimed that she was primed to voice her character in the Star Wars animated series, The Bad Batch. And obviously, both of those shows are on Disney Plus. So obviously all of those appearances went up in smoke and she's kind of, you know, vanished from the Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars galaxy. Um, but ho however, you know, she still has a couple of fans still remaining uh, that might get to see her in some sort of space opera. So it seems that uh, We Got This Covered has also reported that she's in that she's actually developing her own Star Wars type project. Uh, that uh, uh, outlet claims that the project is likely be uh, to be in partnership with uh, ben Shapiro's company, who uh, it's the Daily Wire company, and they're actually the ones that signed her to a contract when she got fired and, and let go. Um, so supposedly she's also working on some sort of John Wick style project as well. So no news as of what it really is, how bad <laughs> it's going to be, because I just have visions of it being not even like a B movie. Well, and um, that's the funny thing. Like most most actors and actresses, one of the things that they fear the most is being typecasted. Type <laughs> yeah. And you 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 lose this position in Star Wars and the first thing that you decide that you're going to do is a Star Wars like clone. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of desperation and a lot of regret for losing, mm. you know. Yeah, I could see that. For killing the golden goose. Right. You know, and, and really all it took was just self-control. Yeah. That's all it took. Yeah. You're welcome to have your views. Mm -hmm. Disney doesn't care. They're not trying to dictate the views that you have. Mm -hmm. But as a representative of their company. Right. When you voice controversial things publicly, you're doing that as a representative of the company. Mm -hmm. Right. And all you had to do was keep your mouth shut or keep your, your Twitter feed quiet right. or, or whatever. Or just get off of Twitter. Right. Like, if, if you know you're going to have such a hard time, you know, where you just delete it. Right. Just get rid of it right. so that it's, you don't have Why that. Why don't you jeopardize your entire career yeah. Yeah. just to make mm -hmm. politically charged statements? And the thing is, and I'm sure there are plenty of celebrities out there who have never voiced what their opinion is right uh, uh you know politically because they probably know well if i say that i'm this i'm gonna lose all these well, fans and i can you know? almost guarantee you she had a code of conduct clause in her I'm sure. contract oh absolutely so i'm it's sure not even like this was a, a shock to her or a surprise to her right she knew that if she did things that were outside of that code of conduct right. there was going to be consequences right right and now you're trying to come back with mm -hmm. a Star Wars ripoff? Yeah. That's just sad at this point. <laughs> That's just sad. Anyway, tell yeah. us about the beard. <laughs> 
So it seems there are some new behind the scene images for the Obi-Wan Kenobi series that shows Ewan McGregor sporting a new look as he gets ready to start production. The Disney Plus series will take place 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. Um, is so it's setting, you know, mid, midway between the prequel and the original Star Wars trilogies. Filming the Obi-Wan, uh, show is set to begin filming this month. Because of the significant time jump from Revenge of the Sith, the Obi-Wan scene in the new show may be a good deal different than McGregor's last turn as the character. As a midway point between episodes four and, f- uh, three and four, Obi-Wan should start to show the Jedi transition into the older, more reserved version, which was portrayed by Alec uh, Guinness. Um, but still, McGregor's Obi-Wan is no old man yet, and he's likely seen plenty of action in the upcoming series, including a promised showdown with Darth Vader. Two new behind-the-scenes images were tweeted by Star Wars España, uh, which showed McGregor's new Obi-Wan look, which is a bit more rugged than his prequel appearance. Uh, that makes uh, sense, given that the show will find Obi-Wan in exile on Tatooine as he watches over young Luke Skywalker. So you can see, you know, on the screen, he, you know, looks a little scruffy. You know, he's... Oh, he's a nomad now. Right. Well, know? yeah, I was going to say, he's, you know, he's... he's <laughs> In lockdown on Tatooine. <laughs> um, so the look isn't complete, obviously, without the costume, of course, but it gives a glimpse at the mountain hermit aesthetic Obi-Wan uh, will be wearing in the Dune Sea, on the Dune Sea. Uh, one of the biggest questions for the Obi-Wan show is why the Jedis leave Tatooine in the first place. It seems highly likely unlikely that he'll be stationed on the desert planet for the duration of the story, but it would take a pretty big event to get him to abandon, obviously, looking his vigil of looking over Luke. Uh, that could mean maybe helping out other Jedi survivors of Order 66, um, or maybe working with the Rebel Alliance, whatever the you know, the cause, it sounds like Obi-Wan will be running into some Imperial entanglements. Uh, Disney recently announced uh, that there were, uh, you know, the extensive, uh, the extensive supporting cast list um, of, you know, the, the various characters uh, that they haven't mentioned who they are. They just mentioned some of the, the different actors. Um, so now we, we just have to kind of wait and see. So, Come on, start filming already. <laughs> you know, it is worth mentioning uh, that Baby Yoda could show up in here in the time frame that True. they're shooting in. Um, True. Because they're only going to be 30 years before Mandalorian at this point. Right. And he's 50 and in he's the Mandalorian. So he could be like a really baby Yoda. Right. Because he could be, he'd be 20. Oh my God. Could you imagine how cute it is? So you have Baby Yoda, you have Ahsoka right. show up, right? Uh, you have any of the characters from Rebels mm-hmm. would still be around, right? For most for the most part, right, right. Uh, you have Cal Kestis who shows up from the video game Jedi Fallen Order, okay. or you can have you know, given the the array of participants they've already announced in the cast true you could have entirely new characters that are going to show and that's what i'm hoping is that there's you know some new characters or and i think we've we've talked about this before or characters who like we kind of knew of but didn't play a major role in any of the the movies so kind of you know these subcat you know character characters that here we're going to find out they did all of this to make this Right. And this time period that they're setting this in, too, is also a time period where the Empire is on the rise. Mm-hmm. Vader's hunting down the remaining Jedi that right. didn't get killed during Order 66. Right, right. And there's been a lot of speculation around Hayden Christensen's interaction here as Darth Vader. Right. Suggesting that there will be a real time, you know, not a flashback, but a real time confrontation between the two of them. Which should be interesting to rectify that in some of the lines from A New Hope. Right, right. So should be interesting. He's yeah. definitely they're they're shooting. They're going to start shooting this month, 
and he's got the beard. He yep. doesn't doesn't have to spend a lot of time in wardrobe or right, makeup. Exactly. Rather, <laughs> quarantine was good to good to Obi Wan. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's good. I'm I'm excited to see this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure more news will be coming out of this. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, they're not. They don't seem to be as uh, strict on security and leaks as they tend to be with the movies. So a lot True. more information does seem to come out of the TV shows. Well, and, and that's the thing, too, with, you know, with The Mandalorian, we really didn't know. Not the first season. Second you know, season, a lot more came out. Right. There was still some, you know, secrecy, but not, like not nearly as much. Like, we knew Boba Fett was going to be in there. We knew Ahsoka was going to be, like, right. you knew that these stuff. people are coming back. It was just a matter of it. when are they and how right. are they, right. you know. Right. Well, so. and, and I think the problem with Ahsoka was that, you know, the only reason she was in there is because they needed to bring her back so she could get their own show. Right. Because everyone gets your own spinoff with right, Star once Wars you, now. Well, unless you're, you know, Gina. Unless you're, wow, really? Oh. That's, that's Too low. soon? That's low. <laughs> I'm just saying. She could have. Anyway. She that's, screwed that up. <laughs> that's all we had for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. We'll be right back with our entertainment news of the week. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Dum, 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 dum. Go for entertainment news. <laughs> so this was kind of, you know, depressing news. So it seems that Disney Plus has opted not to order a second season of the Space Race series, The Right Stuff. The Mercury 7 period drama, which starred Patrick uh, Adams, originated as a National Geogra at, at National Geographic before it launched as a Disney Plus original last October. It is Disney Plus's first scripted series that has actually been canceled. Uh, Warner Brothers Television, the studio behind the right stuff, is actually shopping it to other outlets with Warner Media's sibling TNT and HBO Max in consideration. Um, so one of the things that was mentioned in the article was that the cast... Um, uh, the options on the cast were actually expiring the day uh, before this article came out. So that might have had kind of some, you know, part of why the news came out. Um, so there is, uh, you know, a major incentive for Warner Brothers and its parent, uh, Warner Media, to try and keep the right stuff going. It seems that in November, the series, which is produced like by uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's uh, Apian Way was given $13.7 million to move from Florida to California for season two. And that is the fourth highest relocating incentive ever awarded under the CFC program. So Disney's decision not to proceed with the second season, um, which was adapted from Tom Wolfe's best-selling nonfiction account of the early days of the space uh, program, came after a lengthy discussion with uh, Warner Brothers Television. Um, basically, it, it sounded like the second season was actually going to be focused on new missions from the 1980s, and obviously with a different cast um, of characters. Um, so the right stuff, which is believed to have been a modest performer for Disney Plus, did not break into Nielsen's top 10 streaming ratings. Uh, marked Nat Geo's first scripted 
um, original series for Disney+. Plus. It was Disney Plus's second original drama after The Mandalorian and provided the platform with a high-end original uh, scripted series in the fall when streamers fell to the effect of the coronavirus um, you know, related production shutdowns and, and, you know, different shows that, that weren't being produced. This one was, had already been done, obviously. Um, so the show was actually set in 1959. It was eight episodes. Um, and it examined what, you know, basically became America's first reality show. Um, as ambitious astronauts and their families became instant celebrities in a competition that would kill them or make them immortal. Uh, obviously the, you know, two of the astronauts were at the center of the story and that was John Glenn and Alan Shepard. Um, and obviously you had the rest of the Mercury seven, uh, cast uh of astronauts as well along with uh their wives uh you know and families so again they're still looking to to shop this around so maybe it'll come back on another platform or maybe it was a a one and done you know this doesn't really surprise me at all because it was a show we liked Mm -hmm. (laughs) and And every time we like we have a reputation (laughs) of shutting shows down as soon as we like them true true Uh, same thing with restaurants you know which if anything the pandemic has saved a lot of restaurants right because we don't we don't go out yeah Uh, but yeah it was a good show it was it was very drama centric Mm -hmm. yeah um so you kind of had to sift through some of the creative Right. Drama that they put in there mm-hmm. to to kind of pull out the meaningful parts, the historically accurate parts. Right. And it would have been interesting to kind of see where, you know, they went from there. Obviously, there's so much more story, you know, to tell because Mercury 7 was just the start of it. And, right. you know, that was really what, you know, the, the movie, The Right Stuff focused on you know but then you have you know the the series uh that came out uh years ago um uh earth to the moon right and that was you know that was a terrific series and that was done i don't even remember how many episodes that was that was a a good couple that was the ron howard tom hanks one that came out after apollo 13 right right so you had you know so they've done all these stories before it's not like the story hasn't been told right but it was yeah this was a fresh take on mm -hmm, it it showed you things that right you didn't see before like the fact that one of the interesting things in in early on in the series is that these guys were were all test pilots. Mm-hmm. You know, they were hot shots and 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 celebrities in their own right. Right. And when they show up at NASA, which is an organization that didn't exist, you right. see the early days where it's literally just a conference room. Right. And these guys show up on a military base, and they're told they need to sleep in in bunk beds. You know, in one room. Right. And they're like, Matt, we're not going to do this. And they go over and they basically take over they a take local over motel. A, right. They take over the motel. Yeah. And, it's like, and that okay. becomes, you know, astronaut central there. Right, and, right. and that really happened. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone remembers uh, seeing the footage of these guys driving around in their Corvettes and they all got Corvettes. Well, they show you the story behind, behind how, how they, they negotiate got. the Corvettes. And it was a local deal that when they were in Florida, this local dealer gave it to them as a, as a marketing promotion. Right. Right. Um, so a lot of that stuff, are, you know, there's a lot of little little morsels in there that nobody right. ever really knew about. Right. Or that you can't put in a two hour movie, but you can put in an eight hour series. Right. Exactly. You know? so, so it's a good show. It's yeah. a, you know, hopefully they do get picked up mm-hmm. somewhere else. I think there's a lot of potential left in there. And it would be nice to see, you know, more recent stuff because you really haven't seen too many shows wink wink nudge nudge that have talked about the 80s you know 90s even you know space right. exploration you know so it would be nice to kind of see that because again they've done a lot of the okay here's how we got to the you know here's the mercury yeah, seven the, here's the the, the, the apollo the mercury, missions. gemini and apollo missions have been done to right and after that extreme. they haven't done you know anything else so it would be nice you know if maybe if they were able to come back they could start off with well and i think a lot of it has to do with the fact that after that our space program was pretty lackluster we didn't get out of earth orbit right you had a shuttle program that was by and large a failure from what it was designed to be Mm. 
you had a couple of tragedies that occurred Absolutely. with it. Absolutely, yeah. It, it was not a period of time that true that NASA really wants to highlight. Yeah. So I have to imagine because of that, you you don't get a lot of cooperation from NASA or the mm. U.S. government. Yeah. Whereas, you know, Apollo was was the heyday of NASA, and everybody wants to talk about the good old days. Right. Right. Uh, but in reality, the, the the technology and the advancements we made during the seventies and eighties mm -hmm. really carried us to where we are now, and right. I think. I think with the commercialization of space, and I don't want to get off topic, but the commercialization of space now gives us an appreciation mm -hmm. for what NASA did in the 70s yeah. and 80s. So I think it's a great period. Mm -hmm. You're right to to kind of highlight that. Yeah. But even though uh, Right Stuff got the boot, we we do have good news about another show that uh, is a favorite of ours. So it seems that the showrunner for the vampire parody show, What We Do in the Shadows, has teased that uh, something completely different uh, is the direction that they're looking for the third season. So the third outing for the show was actually confirmed last year, just after the second season started to air on FX. Based on the 2014 film of the same name, the show follows three vampires in New York City who have been roommates for hundreds and hundreds of years. So it seems they had done a virtual panel uh, back at the end of March, and the showrunner uh, executive producer Paul Sims and the executive producer St uh, Stephanie Robinson joined the show's cast over Zoom to discuss work on season three, uh, as well as revealing that writing was well underway for the new series and that a February 2021 20, uh, shooting date had been pushed back to later this year due to ongoing COVID restrictions, Sims teased uh, what to expect from the new edition of the show. He said, as well as teasing a new character who, quote, somebody we all know and love, Robinson said that uh, the critical reception of the show's second season's uh, show that... Um, showed that the bosses can basically do whatever we want with the show. Uh, they were also talking about how uh, in the second uh, uh, season, they had the whole um, alter ego of Jackie Daytona uh, <laughs> that his, you know, the human of uh, uh, that Matt uh, Barry had played and that there's, you know, a potential future for that character, but that that episode uh, Robinson had said, gave us the opportunity to break format from all the characters and push the show into new settings, formats, and characters to explore uh, that we've established. Um, so maybe not another Jackie Daytona adventure, but something kind of completely different and going in a different direction. Um, you know, they basically said that, you know, discussing the show's mockumentary format uh, they, you know, they said that that style grounds it and makes, you know, the show work, you know, Staten Island, the neighbors and everything needs to feel real. And it's the magic of the show, because when it feels real, the cast can be big and surprising and, you know, having, you know, some reality kind of tapered in kind of makes it work. Um, so obviously it's one of our favorite shows. We're very excited, you know, for it to come back. And now, you know, hmm, who's this, you know, character who everybody already knows? Is it, you know, a, a vampire everybody knows? Or is it maybe a character from the original movie, maybe? See, I think maybe they <coughs> got um, one of the characters from the, remember they had the, the council meeting? Right. I think you might see someone from the council meeting. I could see in. that. Maybe a Wesley Snipes might be coming in as okay. Blade or something like that since I he didn't make see. the council right, meeting. Right, because he didn't make it because he was having an issue with his Skype. Right, or, right. Yeah. That would be yeah, awesome. Yeah, that would be that would be funny. So Or Tom Cruise coming in. <laughs> Tom <Cruise>. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Pitt. Well or do, which one did because one of them didn't live yeah, in an interview with a vampire. One. I can't remember. But yeah, so that would be kind of, yeah. you know, and of course we have the other spin off. Right. You right, know, we as well, which is the paranormal, but that one's going to take place, you know, New Zealand. Right. Uh, so we got, you know, two, two we new. We might even see a return of, you know, Taika Waititi or one of the other characters from the movie itself. We could. Nosferatu might show up. That no, would be. wait. 
He yeah. didn't make he it. He didn't right. make it. Yeah. No. Too soon. Yeah. Too soon. <laughs> anyway, so that was all we had for our entertainment that news. Was it. We'll be right back with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick is a funny, heartfelt, moving docu-series, uh, which is on Netflix called Worn Stories. And it's about real people who unpack the fascinating and quirky stories around their most meaningful pieces of clothing. Spanning everything from dry cleaning to outer space, this eight-part look at people's most treasured clothing items captures an expansive variety of life's experiences. Um, early on in, you know, the, the episodes, um, you get to meet people from all sorts of backgrounds. Um, every episode kind of focuses on a, a different theme. Um, and it's actually adapted from writer um, Emily uh, Spivak's book of the same name, where um, you know, she interviewed different people and, and talk, you know, had them talk about, you know, various different clothing. Um, you know, there's one woman who, um, grew up with a, a disability and, you know, was told she could never do, you know, certain things. And 27 years ago, she got a job as a crossing guard and she absolutely loves it because she feels when she puts on her uniform, she's almost a superhero. Um, but yet she loves doing cosplay and making all these costumes because it lets her become somebody who she's not, you know, normally. Um, so you have that. Then, you know, they actually talked with a NASA astronaut and, you know, what's his favorite clothing? And he talks about how, you know, he went to, to college and he went to Columbia and he never thought about becoming an astronaut but you know it was kind of the start of the the 80s and the programs and stuff and how he applied multiple times and you know never got an interview finally gets an interview and he goes for the physical and he fails the eye exam and he actually you know works on it and trains his eyes to you know to do better and he passes and he ends up going up in the space shuttle and it's okay you can bring one article of clothing what is it that you bring and he brings his columbia sweatshirt so it's little things you know like that what was kind of interesting was um you know in in the one episode they talked to a bunch of nudists but yet, you know, it's their sandals or it's a cover up that, you know, they they kind of cling to. Um, but talking about how freeing it is not to be constricted with, with clothing, um, you know, uh, another gentleman, he had a pair of cowboy boots and he ended up on the plane that went down um, in the um in Manhattan, in, in, in the river, Sully, you know, Sullivan was, you know, he was on that flight and he, you know, survived and he still has his pair of boots that he kind of leaves in his closet, but he still has that connection to them. So, you know, all these different types of people, a couple of celebrities kind of sprinkled in, but, you know, for the most case, it's, you know, everyday people talking about, you know, a, you know, a, a coat or a, a jacket or a tie or something. And it, it just kind of, you know, it, it just a good feeling, you know, documentary, um, you know, just about the clothes that we wear and, and the impact that it that it has on us. So interesting pick. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. So my pick this week is actually a eh, kind of a repick, we'll say. Right. Um, when For All Mankind came out in their first season, I did it. But they're back for a second season. Season two of the space drama picks up a decade later in 1983. It's the height of the Cold War and tensions between the United States and the USSR are at their peak. Ronald Reagan is president and the greater ambitions of science and space exploration are at threat of being squandered 
as the U.S. and Soviets go ahead, go head to head to control sites rich in resources on the moon. The Department of Defense has moved into mission control, and the militarization of NASA becomes central to several character stories. Some fight it, some use it as an opportunity to advance their own interests, and some find themselves at the height of a conflict that may lead to nuclear war. The level of drama in Season 2 is at the same fever pitch, but at a more global level now. Instead of being confined to individual struggles and interpersonal relationships, which you still have, we see a number of outside obstacles that contribute to the drama. Having very much departed the known world of NASA of the 1960s by the end of Season 1, the 10-year time hop of Season 2 allows the show to take on a whole new personality firmly grounded in fiction with a new nostalgic, a few nostalgic historic references. Not only has the space race been affected from our known historical timeline, but we see a great number of other things from politics, pop culture, technology, and industry have also been affected by this alternate timeline of events. Most of these changes serve as colorful backdrops without having any real significance to the plot. We see John Lennon hasn't been assassinated in 1980, but Pope John Paul was. A 1980 Miracle on Ice hockey game between the U.S. and the Soviets never happens. And Prince Charles marries Camilla. He doesn't marry Diana. Interesting. Now, none of those things have a direct impact on the plot. Right. It's just. But it's just the way of them showing you, hey, these events happened, but they didn't happen the way you thought they did. Mm, Okay. For the most part, these have little effect on the plot of the show and serve more as familiar references to lend credence to this time period much like a reference to Star Trek The Wrath of Khan just being released in theaters, pop culture references designed to act as anchor points in the timeline and highlight the fact that this world is different from reality. It's an interesting attempt at historical foreshadowing where the audience knows what happens in the time period, but you don't quite know if it happens in the show as it does in real life. It makes for an interesting mix of drama and seeding possible plot twists later on. Uh, I've been very impressed with the um, the second season so far. I'm about six episodes in, I want to say. Okay. And uh, I think it's a 10-episode season, so I'm a little past the midway point. What was What's interesting is they sort of set the tone early on with a couple of events and those events don't play out until much later in the season. Okay. And things sort of start falling into place. So they do a very good job of organizing the story, um, referencing existing plot lines. Like there's one scene where they're they're talking about um, a speech that Ronald Reagan gives. And they show footage of Ronald Reagan, but they pull the same type of thing that they do in – uh, Forrest Gump, where they manipulate his mouth okay. to change the words just slightly to give the speech a different meaning. Mm-hmm. And then you start getting uh, commentary from other politicians and you see a flash up of Jimmy Carter, who's a senator in 1983. So he never ran for president. Okay. So a lot of these little things here are are kind of <laughs> little Easter eggs and stuff to kind of show you how it wound up going a little bit different. Hmm. Um, but I think it's it's still a very good show. It's filling my gap uh, with uh, the right stuff having been canceled. So I recommend it for all mankind season two streaming now on Apple TV. It is dropping every Friday until they've dropped the whole season. Okay. And we'll be right back. So I think that was it. Uh, mm-hmm. We didn't have any afterthoughts this week, right? Nope. Uh, before we go, I would suggest folks subscribe to the podcast. Uh, You can get the video versions of the podcast. If you look for insights into things, that's all of our shows on video. You can get audio of just this podcast. If you look for insights into entertainment, we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Amazon, pretty much any place you can get a podcast these days. Uh, We would also invite folks to reach out and give us some feedback. Uh, In fact, our Insights into Teens episode this week mm-hmm. was uh, at suggestion of one of our listeners. So we would love to get your 
feedback on how we're doing, topics you'd like us to discuss, and anything to do with the show, you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us at Twitter at insights underscore things. We do stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a monthly Twitch Prime subscription. If you threw that our way, we'd greatly appreciate it. It helps to keep all these really hot lights on in here. <laughs> you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insights into things podcast. We're on Instagram at insights into things. Uh, the audio version of all of our podcasts are at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. You can catch high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. And for links to everything and anything about us, you can go to insightsintothings.com. I think that's it. Another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.